Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the show that rewards obscure answers rather than the obvious ones. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hello, I'm Jane, and this is my husband, Darren, and we come from Walton on Thames in Surrey. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Lewis, and this is my wonderful partner, Rosie, and we're from Manchester. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Peter, this is my lovely daughter, Rebecca, and we're from Bromley in Kent. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Nick, and this is my fantastic daughter, Elsa, and we're from Camden. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, every single one of you. Lovely to have you here on Pointless. A very warm welcome. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's as popular as Anton Deck on a narrow boating holiday with Sir David Attenborough and the Queen. <laughs> it's my Pointless friend, is Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Hello there. Hello. When, when did this thing start with people putting adjectives into their introductions? I they don't. didn't used to do it. <laughs> and the thing I don't understand is it's happened a lot recently. Oh, but a lot. This is on shows that haven't gone out on television yet. Yeah. So something's happening know. behind the Science scenes happen. where people are saying, maybe call your uh, your partner lovely, or maybe, <laughs> oh, do maybe you think call maybe your daughter people delightful. Are being briefed, do you think? Oh, I hope not. I would hope oh, that would I mean, be very shallow. <laughs> because <laughs> that wouldn't ring true. Where does that end up? I tell you what I was quite enjoying. It looked from where I was standing like Nick was quite close to hitting Elsa in the nose. <laughs> when he said, this is my fwang. <laughs> that would oh. be, be a dad move. Now, Nick and Elsa are back for their final show. Last time we're going to see them today. Mm. And Lewis and Rosie back as well. Both of those teams have been to a head-to-head -head as well. So they are forces to be reckoned with. Yeah. Pugnus 1 and 3, how lovely to have you here. Should be a laugh, shouldn't it? I think they they all... You, I mean, you know, you shouldn't judge books by covers. Yeah. I mean, you know that as well as oh, anyone. Oh, goodness me, yes. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> but they look quite intelligent. Well, yeah, and we know Do already you know? They're, they're, they're a mixture of lovely and fantastic. Oh, the, the, the far <laughs> lot, we know. But, uh, oh, the, the, oh, sorry, I see what you mean, lovely and fantastic. Well, but everyone's been intelligent yeah. recently. Yeah. We keep giving away that jackpot or, um, yeah. like an insane oh, amount of time. So really, 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 yeah. really good players. Really You're right. Players. You're right, because, for example, last time, Thomas and James, they went through to the jackpot round and, as you know, we, uh, we didn't give it to them. They didn't win the jackpot. So we're adding another £1,000 to that. Ooh. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,500. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pondus. Remember at all times that it is the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. So keep your scores low and everything will be great. Best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Four-letter words. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... ..words formed by replacing a single letter of the word dame. As they could, Richard. Mm, I'm looking for any word in the Chambers Dictionary, please, that you can get by replacing one and only one of those letters with something else. So keep everything in the same order, just replace one of them with a different letter and create a new four-letter word. As mm. always, no proper nouns or anything like that. Mm. But any word in the English language you can get by changing one of those letters. Uh, thank you. Jane. Hello, Alexander. Welcome to Pointless. Thank How nice you. to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Well, I'm a primary school teacher. I teach Year 6 in a lovely little local primary school. Lovely. And uh, when the teaching is done, what do you do? What do you do then? Well, I'm one of these people that likes to think they can hold a tune. So I've been a member of a choir for the last 13 years. And we do lots of concerts. We've even been abroad on foreign tours. Jane, I think if you couldn't hold a tune, you would no longer be in that choir. I'm quite <laughs> oh, certain. Oh, I don't know about that. Um, so that's exciting. You've toured. Well, right. How well, big is the choir? We've, we've been abroad. We've been to places like Poland and um, Croatia and it's taken part in festivals over there. So, yeah. How very lovely. Um, now, Jane, um, there we are. Dame, we're looking for any word you can make by changing just one of those letters. OK, so I'm going to change the M and I'm going to go for days. D-A-Z-E. Days, says Jane. Let's see how many of our 100 people said days. Days is good. This is very good. Down to go six. Yeah. Great answer. Jane, days six. Yeah, to make someone feel confused or an old English term for 48 hours. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, and now then, Rosie, welcome back. Great to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself. So, I'm a charity worker and a university lecturer from Manchester. Very nice indeed. And what sort of things do you like getting up to? 
So I enjoy theatre, film, um, big fan of the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, oh, I actually you... host a podcast about that. So oh, do that's you? Good fun. I thought you were going to say I host a party. Oh, but, that um, too. Do you do a podcast after the event or do you do a live podcast as it's going along? We go through the whole year. So we spend oh, the wow. season where all of the entrants are getting announced, um, talking about those. And then when we're not doing that, we talk about history, different countries. I feel awful shame that I thought that it just happened on the night. Course, <laughs> that's just the tip. That's the whole build up. tip of the iceberg. That's the oh, tip of the Iceland. Of the Iceland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and now, Rosie, what are you going to go for? So Jane's just taken my word. Oh Sorry. no! So that went well <laughs> by by the second podium. Um, but I have a few others. Oh, there should be others in there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go for dare. Dare, says Rosie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said dare. Dare is right. <laughs> Goes down to 20. Not bad. To challenge someone to do something frightening or difficult. I Excellent. know, or to, you know. Yeah, yeah. I go. dare you to walk behind the column and come out the other side. <laughs> it can't be done. There's a force field there. <laughs> oh, my God. There's also a drop of about 20, 30 feet down there as well. Is it really? Yeah, wow. Massive. Yeah, because oh, yeah. The, what, what we see is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Sorry, um, the column is like massive. Because quite often the column, no, because it can go right down to sort of minus 300. Yeah, exactly. It has, it has done has in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, right, Peter. Hello. Welcome to Pointless. How nice Thank to have you here. Tell us, tell us all about yourself. I'm an IT consultant uh, and I work for a Finnish software company. Oh, that's nice. Do you ever get to go to Finland? Or... I have been, only for the initial stages, but mostly now I'm uh, stuck in Bromley in Kent. Well, I suppose being <laughs> IT, I mean, it, it can all happen online. It can, it can. Unless, of course, it is the connection itself that is the problem. That exactly. is, uh, yeah, yeah, when the kids are taking all the... Uh, the bandwidth, that's, that's an issue sometimes. Oh, that <laughs> is an issue. It's... Peter, um, what are you going to go for? Oh, slightly, slightly risky one. I'll go for Dale, D-A-L-E, Dale. Dale, yeah. Dale. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Dale. Whew. Dale is right. <laughs> that goes down to 20. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny being on point. This makes you doubt whether Dale is a word. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's yeah, a, a valley, especially in the, the north of England. Yeah. Lots and lots of, lots of place names and yeah. all sorts of Dale. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, Nick, welcome back. Thank uh, you. Remind us all about yourself. So I'm chief exec of uh, this charity, the Society of Occupational Medicine. Wonderful. There we are. Now, Nick, what would you like to go for? Well, I'm having my 15 minutes of fame, so I'm going to say fame. Fame. There we are. Let's see how far down the column we get with fame. Is right. 50 is where fame ends. OK, right. Mm. Mm. It's a big old score, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, Andy Warhol once said, in the future, everyone will be famous for 50 points. <laughs> that was his quote. <laughs> Um, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Six was the best score of the past, Jane, by quite a margin. Because we then travel up to 20, where we find Rosie and Lewis and Peter and Rebecca, and then we travel from there up to 50, which is where we find Nick and Elsa. Luckily, Elsa, you're going to have an absolute knockout answer, I know, which is going to bring you beautifully back into the game. So good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Elsa, welcome back to Pointless. Lovely to have you with us again for a third and final time. Mm -hmm. We've got to see this through. We've got to see this through, if possible, to the final, I think. But, yes, we have a bit of a mountain to climb. Um, remind us all about yourself, Elsa. Um, I'm a first-year English Lit student at the University of Sussex, and I enjoy cooking Greek foods. And although I'm not very good at Greek, because I've got an F in GCSE Greek, ancient Greek. Oh, no. But the food, um, though. Food, love the food. Food's and great. the country, great. And the country. Yeah. How nice. Where do you come in the pecking order of the five children? First. Number one. Oh, well oh. done. Well yeah. done. That, I think that was the way to play it. I think you've done <laughs> that extremely well. Um, now, there you are on 50. Ideally, we'd like a pointless answer from you, I think. Um, I was going to do Dane. Dane? Dane. W why not? 
Yeah. Dane, there's going to be no red line for you, I'm afraid, as you are the high scorers. Uh, but let's see how many of our 100 people said Dane. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 150. Yeah, I think it's worth a risk, though. It's one of those words that crops up, doesn't it? It's one of those, you know, it okay. sounds kind of convincing. Mm. You know, when we read out the lower scorers, you know, it'd be Dane and it'd be like some Scottish measurement of something. Yeah. But, yeah, not there. I guess it is only a proper noun. I'm yes, afraid. someone from Denmark, yeah. 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 Oh, dear. Rebecca. Hello. Yes. Welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have Thank you here. You. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a social media writer uh, for a virtual assistant company. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> just so far out of my realm of, of familiarity. Social media, I know yep. that. Virtual assistant. It's kind of personal assistant and virtual assistant. So I see. at the moment, we're very much virtual. <laughs> very good indeed. <laughs> um, how nice. Now, Rebecca, yep. good news. You're into round two. Doesn't matter what you score. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you score. I'm very fame and Dane. Um, have seen you through. What are you going to go for? I think I'm going to say damp. 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 OK, well, let's see how many of our 100 people said damp. There's no red line, you're already through. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Down goes damp to 14, taking your total up to 34. Very well played, yeah. Slightly wet. Or what someone in Ireland plays their guitar through. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Lewis, welcome back. Good to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself. I'm a recruitment consultant in Manchester and I'm finishing off my Masters. When will that be done, the Masters? Uh, hopefully soon. <laughs> and when that's done, will you stay with the recruitment consulting or do you then, armed with your Masters, go out into the wider world? Right now, I just think I'm in a job I like with people I like, so... Th that answers yeah. my next question. Listen, well, there you are. If you like the job and you like the people, that's 100% of the battle done, isn't it? Um, there we are. Well, Lewis, you are on 20. Doesn't matter what you score, you're through to the next round. Right. Um, I, I'm just running through and uh, every word I can think doesn't sound like a word anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's you should try presenting this show. It's literally... <laughs> uh, I'm thinking if I needed to block a lot of water, I might, go f I might need a lot of dams. Yeah, or if you were breeding a lot of horses, I suppose, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, there you are, dams. Let's see. No red line. You're already through. How many of our 100 people said dams? Dams is right. That goes down to 10. Very well done indeed. Takes your total up to 30. Uh, yeah, more than one dam. Got it. Clever, isn't it? Clever. Sick and Oh, it's clever. Plural, yeah. That's how we pluralise. Usually. Occasionally we don't. Like child, you don't say childs. No. But usually, just stick an S on the end. That's yeah. what we do with dam. It's quite fun, the, uh, actually, children. It's very lovely old-fashioned English plural. Ox, oxen, child, children. <laughs> exactly. It's just lovely, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Dam, damen yeah. in, in German. My damen, damen and my damen herren. 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 Yeah, you yeah, see. Yeah, there we go. There we go. What are we talking about? I have no idea, <laughs> yeah. but it's fun. Oh, Darren, you see, it's two Darren, oh, two Dars. Oh, there he two is. Two Dars, make a Darren. He's like a Darren and a Heron, make a Darren. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I figured that oh, would wow. Yeah. Um, Darren, lovely to have you here. Welcome you. to Point. Just tell us all about yourself. Well, I'm a trains manager on London Subterranean Commuter System. Wow. The underground. <laughs> well, you know, I, I got that. I was, <laughs> I was busy unpacking it and I got there. Subterranean being the clue. Um, which network? Or the, the whole lot? The whole lot. A Victoria line was mine. Oh, so, can I one, commend you? You did beautifully. Oh, thank you. It's, it's lovely one of dark. many in the team, though. It's not just me. <laughs> oh, well, but I imagine it's probably larger than you. The, the two darts. <laughs> um, Darren, a lovely low score from Jane, the first part of six. Uh, means doesn't matter what you score. Doesn't matter what you score at all. You are through to the next round. No pressure, then. <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. I mean, genuinely no pressure. I think a very poor answer would be lame. L-A-M. Lame, <laughs> says Darren. OK, no red line, no pressure. Let's see how many of our 100 people said lame. Lame is right. Oh. Goes down to 56, takes it up to 62. It's actually the biggest scorer of all, Lame. Really? Yeah, the top scorers are Lame, oh. Same and then Fame. Those are the top three scorers. Well, um, Dace. Dace. Dace, the fish. Yeah, Dace, uh, the fish. That's I a lovely answer, yeah, six points for oh, Dace, okay. the fish. Uh, low scorers, two points for Haim. 
One point for WAME, W-A-M-E, and there are two pointless answers, uh, and they are DEEM, or DEME, uh, and CAME, which is Scottish. It's always Scottish. It's Scottish for comb. Of course it is. Yeah, or it's, I mean, it's not Scottish for comb. They call the comb a comb, don't you? Uh, it's but another, it's, it's, it's an old, it's old Scots it's archaic word. Scottish for comb. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, well, that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. And this is sad, because Nick and Elsa, we've come to know you quite well. <laughs> over these past three shows, and it's been a great pleasure having you on the show, and I'm sorry we're not sending you home with more solid evidence of how well you've actually done. Um, but anyway, I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye, so goodbye it must be. Elsa and Nick, thank you for playing. Thanks. Back for the remaining three pairs, now time for round two. Very well done, everybody. You all played immaculately in that round, let me tell you. Jane, you were our individual lowest scorer, so very well done to you. Lewis and Rosie, you were our lowest combined scorers, so well done to you. And Rebecca and Peter, just well done. <laughs> Good luck to everybody. Our category for round two this afternoon is... History by month. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..historical events that happened in December. Richard? Yeah, we're going to run out of these months at some point, aren't we? There must be, like, the fourth or fifth oh, yeah, of these that yeah. we've done. And uh, now we're just six questions to historical events. They all happened in December, but what were they, please? What were these historical events? All in December. Here they go. We've got... Surname of the US brothers who made the world's first successful powered aeroplane flight, 17th of December 1903. This Norwegian explorer led the first expedition to reach the South Pole, 14th of December 1911. This state became the first of the original 13 colonies to ratify the US Constitution, 7th of December 1787. Christian Barnard performed the first successful human transplant of this organ, 3rd of December 1967. This ship was found adrift in the Atlantic with its captain and crew mysteriously missing, 5th of December 1872. And this man crowned himself Emperor of France, 2nd of December 1804. There we are, Jane. OK. I think I'm going to go for the second one the Norwegian explorer, and I think that's Amundsen. Amundsen, says Jane. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Amundsen. It's right. And down that goes to 25. Very well done indeed, Jane. 25 for Amundsen. Uh, yeah, well done. 35 days before uh, Scott reached the Polar Zone. Must have been uh, in December. Must have been very cold. Must not have been very cold. Oh, yeah, gone in August. I hope he took some gloves. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I would have thought so. Oh. Yeah. And socks. Spare socks yes. as well, because they can get wet in the snow. Well, they can, And then Richard, suddenly they they're can. even colder. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. And oh. a nice scarf. You, I think Amundsen must have taken some nice scarves. He, he would have, have taken a scarf. Some, he'd have taken a scarf. Amundsen's no fool. No. I'll check out, see if there's any selfies. <laughs> see what he's wearing. I should think so. Thank you. Uh, Rosie. I feel like Jane's just here to steal all my answers. Because <laughs> I was planning on going for that one, but I think I'm going to go for the first successful human transplant, and I think that's the heart. Heart, says Rosie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said heart for Christian Barnard. Heart is right. 25 is the only score we have till now. 69 for heart. Yeah, Louis Washkansky was the, uh, the patient who received that first ever heart. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Rebecca, this board's all yours. Do you Ooh. want to talk us through it and fill in the blanks? Um, I think the top one is the Wright brothers. Um, the next one I'm not sure, but I would guess maybe Virginia. The next one down I'm not sure on. And the bottom one, I would say Napoleon. Um, but the one I'm going to go for is the top one, uh, the Wright brothers. The Wright Brothers, says Rebecca. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. The Wright Brothers. It is the Wright Brothers. 69 is our high score, and you pass it. There you are on 57. Yeah, they tossed a coin to see uh, who would go first. Wilbur won the toss, but that flight was unsuccessful, so Orville, by losing the toss, became the, uh, the first actual person to uh, oh. have powered flight because he did the second one. Ah. Oh. Ah, uh, goes to show sometimes luck is not luck. Oh. Can I reveal something? I'm about to reveal something, really. I'm yes. proudly going to lay gonna my ignorance it. out. I thought they were both in the same plane. 
No, 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 no. I thought it was, it was two pilots. I thought they were two-seater. The no. No. No, they were engineers. Oh, engineers. Yeah, they just knocked it out oh, together. Really? But yeah, they so, took yeah. it in turns. That's nice. It'd be a bit much to... They'd have to carry twice as much weight immediately. Oh, you're completely right. I hadn't thought of that. And no, then all the, all the food for them. Yeah, They're, for in-flight uh, in uh, in flight catering. It's catering stuff. And the... Entertainment systems, they'd have to have two yeah, different ones because they, yeah. they're not both going to want to watch Mr. Bean. So one of them's watching Mr. Bean, the other one's watching a Kevin oh, Costner film from 1986. Kevin Costner and Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's a film I haven't seen, but yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, now, I didn't know this state. I would have gone for Virginia as well, I think. I think this would have been my guess, and it's not. Pennsylvania? No, it's Delaware. Oh, really? Ah, it feels like we should have known we that, right? I know that. Uh, wow. I would have scored two points. Um, so at least we're not alone in not knowing it. Um, very well done if you said that at home. Uh, the ship... Mary Celeste. Yeah. So it's the Mary Celeste. We've always called it the Mary Celeste, but it's yeah. the Mary Celeste. Oh. Arthur Conan Doyle wrote a short story about a Mary Celeste, which I think is where it's come into uh, it's usage. Just but it's Mary the Mary Celeste. Celeste. There you go. Would have scored 44 points. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Napoleon Bonaparte oh, yeah. was the Emperor of France. It would have been a slightly better score than the Wright Brothers, 47 for that. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. I can tell you that 25, Jane, this is becoming a habit. The best <laughs> score of the past. Very well done indeed. Then we travel up to 57, where we find Rebecca and Peter, then up to 69, where we find Rosie and Lewis. So, yes, you're a little bit ahead. Lewis, good luck with evening that up on the next board. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more clues to historical events that took place in December up on the board, and here they are. We've got... Lech Wałęsa, leader of the trade union Solidarity, was elected president of this country, 9th of December 1990. Inventor Christopher Cockerell filed a patent for this amphibious vehicle, 12th of December 1955. This Siberian-born mystic who held influence over the Russian Tsar was murdered, 30th of December 1916. Japan launched a surprise aerial attack on this US naval base in Hawaii, 7th of December, 1941. This king publicly announced his abdication so that he could marry divorcee Wallace Simpson, 11th of December, 1936. And this woman refused to surrender her seat to a white passenger on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama, 1st of December, 1955. Did you notice that? I said, I said Alabama. I've been swayed. I haven't really, but I just, I just somehow... Oh, yeah, you always used to say Alabama. Alabama. I've always said Alabama. I know. Yeah. I mean, listen, sometimes there's an argument one way or another. Alabama. But, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's Alabama. It's Alabama. There. In America it is, yeah. But and Alabama. over here it is as well. Is it, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. very much. I mean, very much so. Alabama, yes. I've told you before, is Barack Obama's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Alabama. Alabama. It's not Alabama. Isn't it's it? absolutely <laughs> lost your Alabama. mind. Alabama. I don't think I have. You have, for whatever reason, despite your expensive education, you've got it wrong. <laughs> You are then, because of a personality flaw, unable to climb down and admit it. So both of those <laughs> things combined mean this is where well, we find ourselves. Oh, I know, I know, I know. I know I'm in a minority. Oh, I mean, define minority. Is I anyone know. saying Alabama at home? It doesn't rhyme with llama. It rhymes with MC Hammer. Everyone knows that. <laughs> um, Peter, what are you going to go for? Um, yeah, there's a few that I... I know, and a few that I'm not 100% sure on. So I'm going to go for a pretty safe and go uh, Poland for Lech Walesa. Lech Walesa, you're going to say Poland. Um, here is your red line. Quite low at this stage, but let's see where you end up with Lech Walesa, Poland. <laughs> 53. 53 takes your total up to 110. Yeah, won the Nobel Peace Prize as well in 1983. And the airport in Gdansk is now Lekofeinza Airport. Indeed, thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, Lewis. Right, well, um, I think I'm going to go for the Siberian-born mystic and I'm going to go for Rasputin. Rasputin for the Siberian-born mystic. Let us find out how many of our 100 people said that. 40 or less is your target, Lewis. That's what it looks like in red line form. Down he goes to 47, not bad. Takes your total up to 116. Yeah, he was assassinated in St Petersburg. He was made famous um, by the Boney M song over here. I mean, I know he was already famous, but they sang Ra Ra Rasputin. OK, thank you. Uh, now, Darren. Darren, you're on 25, 90 or less. Oh, 90 or less. A whole yeah. prairie to walk around in. Thanks for no pressure. 
Yeah, well, again, there's a little bit of pressure, but yeah, not much. Do you want to talk us through the boards, Dan? Um, the woman who refused to surrender the seat, was that Rosa Parks? Um, the king, would that be King Edward? What's left? Japan would be Pearl Harbor. So I'm going for the inventor, Christopher Cockrell. That'd be the hovercraft. The hovercraft for Christopher Cockrell. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said hovercraft. Here's your red line. It is right and you are through. 37 is what it scores you. Takes your total up to 62. Yeah, you use some empty tins and the, uh, the fan from a vacuum cleaner to show how it would work. Wow. wow. You'd take a bit of persuading if that was the demonstration that Cockrell gave you. And he's going, yes, yeah, so all I need from you is about 50 million and we can build a whole fleet of these. Um, you got all the others right as well, Darren. It is Pearl Harbour. And that would have scored you 63. Uh, Edward VIII. He would have scored you 18. And Rosa Parks, of course, at the bottom there. She would have scored you 26. So Edward VIII is the best answer on that board. Well done if you said that one at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round. And it means, Lewis and Rose, we have to say goodbye to you. Oh, dear, our returning couples are just falling like flies. You will be back next time, though, and we'll look forward to that, and let's hope we can see you through to the head-to-head -head and beyond then. But uh, meanwhile, thank you very much for playing Lewis and Rosie. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Jane and Darren, Rebecca and Peter. You are one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at... £2,500. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't put some more money into that jackpot by finding a couple of pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many characters from Sesame Street and the Muppets as they could. Richard? It feels like one we might actually be able to have a go at uh, yeah. for once. Normally, they're completely impossible. Yeah, six uh, characters up on the board. So four of them will be from Sesame Street or the Muppets, two of them pointless answers, and two fake ones as well. But this is a... It's kind of... We must have heard of some of the Muppets or Sesame Street characters, surely. This might make it harder. Yeah, maybe. It might make it harder to find those pointless ones. Anyway, let's have a look. Here come six potential pointless Sesame Street or Muppet characters. And we've got... Stinky the Stinkweed, Emlyn the Gremlin, Rosita, Maury, Dr Teeth and Mama Fiyama. It's Mama Fiyama. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I nearly read, I thought, well, yeah. OK. I think, Doc, I think Dr. Teeth is definitely Dr. a character. Is, is yeah, definitely. That's the only one yeah, so we won't, we'll, we'll avoid him. Um, we'll ooh. talk to you, maybe. I think Rosita might be one of the hosts on Sesame Street. Ah, possibly. OK. So... Now it down slightly more then, doesn't it? Yeah, so that's, oh, that's two that are definite. So. OK, so, Jane and Darren, over to you. What are you going to go for? Top one, just a second. Okay, we'll go for Stinky the Stinkweed. Stinky the Stinkweed, let's find out. Is that a pointless Sesame Street or Muppets character? Stinky the Stinkweed. Ooh, well done. It's definitely right. Oh, and it's oh, pointless. Yes. Very well done indeed. <laughs> one from one. Can we make it two from two, Rebecca and Peter? Ooh, over to you. Um... Yeah. Yeah, uh, so... Do let's... you want to try Emlyn the Gremlin? Yeah, let's go Emlyn the Gremlin. <laughs> Emlyn <laughs> the yeah. Gremlin. Why not? OK, Emlyn the Gremlin. Let's find out. Is that a pointless Sesame Street or Muppets character? Ooh. Oh, no. bad luck. <laughs> not Emlyn the Gremlin. Yeah, that was a C BBC continuity puppet, sort of, you know, the, uh, the Gordon the Gopher, or right? the duck mm. uh, of his day, oh. Emlyn the Gremlin. Um, now, the two who score points um, are the two that you mentioned might score points, so Rosita and Dr Teeth. And so of those other two, Maury and uh, Mama Fiamma, one of those is pointless and one I of them is incorrect. I think, I think it's our friend Mama Fiamma because Emlyn the Gremlin was the sort of smokescreen for the rhyming one, I think. Oh, so you think there's a real rhyming I one? I think there's a real okay, rhyming let's one. let's take a look. Here's the other pointless answer, Mama Fiamma. Absolutely. Yeah. Stinky the Stinkweed and Mama Fiamma. Well done if you said those. And Maury is Jim Henson's middle name. Oh, yeah. there we are. That's yeah, we nice. Thank we you very much indeed. Well, well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means we've added £250 to the jackpot and it now stands at £2,750. <laughs> but who will be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> the 
the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You are now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Best of luck to both pairs. Our first question is all about... Bike and car racing BBC Sports Personality of the Year winners. Richard. Yep, we're looking for people who won that award. We're going to show you five pictures. They all won it on wheels, essentially. Excellent. Let's reveal our five winners of Spoti. But yes, on wheels. Here they come. A. B. C. D and E. OK, there we are. Jane and Darren, you're our low scorers. You get to go first. Right. Is it, is it or not? Is it or not? Um, no. OK, I think we know them all apart from E. Just debating about whether I've got the right surname for C. Um, we go for it? Up to you. OK, we'll go. C is Geraint Thomas. Geraint Thomas, say Jane and Darren, for C. Now then, Rebecca and Peter, do you want to talk us through that board? Yeah. Uh, Chris Hoy is A. Do you know B who? is Jackie Stewart. D, Lewis, D, Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Don't know who he is, so... Do you think Jackie Stewart now? We'll okay. go B, Jackie Stewart. Okay. B, Jackie Stewart. So we've got Geraint Thomas and we've got Jackie Stewart. Jane and Darren are saying Geraint Thomas for C. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. <laughs> Geraint Thomas, absolutely right. Just down to one. Very well done indeed. And good luck, Rebecca and Peter. Um, you have gone for Jackie Stewart for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Down to 34. Well done, Jane and Darren. After one question, you're up 1-0. It's a lovely answer. Yeah, there is an answer out there that will beat it, which we will get to. Um, a, of course, is Sir Chris Hoy. Of course, fewer points than Jackie Stewart, though. 23 points for Chris Hoy. Uh, D, of course, is Lewis Hamilton. He's the biggest scorer up there. Would have scored you 69 points. I was congratulating myself for working E out because there's not many um, motor racers or cyclists who won uh, Sports Personality of the Year. Uh, and I was fairly certain that Graham Hill had. And I thought, oh, he does look like Damon Hill. Oh, yeah. You can sort of see that it looks yes. like Damon Hill. So I said Graham Hill, I was incorrect. Oh. It is, it's the cyclist Tommy Simpson is wow. the answer. And it's a pointless answer. Yeah. Very well done if you said that. <laughs> I could I was be so, so pleased. persuaded yeah. that that was Damon Hill's fault. I was so pleased with myself. Wow, there you go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Rebecca and Peter, you've got to win this one to stay in the game. But you get to answer it first, so that is good. Our second question is all about... ..honey things, Richard. Yeah, five clues now to facts about uh, things to do with honey or the word honey. Thank you very much. Let's reveal the five clues. Here they come. Fictional bear who loves honey, created by A.A. Milne. 1989 film starring Rick Moranis as a scientist who accidentally miniaturises some children. Nocturnal member of the weasel family, which gets its name from its seeming pursuit of honey. Confectionery, also known as cinder toffee, which shares its name with the hexagonal wax structures made by honeybees. And the UK top ten hit by Billy in 1999. I'll read those all again. Fictional bear who loves honey, created by A.A. Milne. 1989 film starring Rick Moranis as a scientist who accidentally miniaturises some children. Nocturnal member of the weasel family, which gets its name from its seeming pursuit of honey. Confectionery, also known as cinder toffee, which shares its name with the hexagonal wax structures made by honeybees. And the UK top ten hit by Billy in 1999. There we go. Rebecca and Peter will go first. Do you know any of them? Um, confectionery, that's, that's honeycomb, isn't it? Should we the bottom one? I don't, I don't know the bottom one. Right. Should we go for the second one? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah, go for it. Uh, OK, so we're going to go for the second one down and say, Honey, I've shrunk the kids. Honey, I've shrunk the kids, say Rebecca and Peter. Now, Jane and Darren. I think that's right. Uh, I'm not sure. Put your flip. OK, he says I should go for it. Um, I'm going to go for the third one, the weasel family, and say, Honey, badger. Honey, badger, 
So we had Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and Honey Badger. Well, Rebecca and Peter went for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Let's see if that's right for the second one down, the Rick Moranis film. It is right. And down it goes to 46. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jane and Darren have gone for Honey Badger for the weasel. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said Honey Badger. Oh, all right. Very well done. Yes. Through it goes, and that <laughs> wins it for you and means Jane and Darren, after only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2-0. Very good. Very well played. Lovely um, answering on both questions there. Um, Winnie the Pooh uh, is the biggest scorer up there. He would have scored you 69 points. Uh, the confectionery honeycomb. course is honeycomb, yeah. Didn't know it was cinder toffee. No. And something new every day, don't you? 41 for that. And the best answer on the board, the Billy song. Don't know. Honey to the bee. Yeah. Honey to the bee. And that scores four points. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Rebecca and Peter, I'm afraid <laughs> it is you. You've been great, though, the whole way through the show. Um, your first appearance on the show, through to the head-to-head. -head. That's pretty impressive. Let's hope we can get you through this far and a little bit further next time. Uh, thank you very much, Rebecca and Peter. <laughs> But for Jane and Darren, it is now time for our pointless fun. <laughs> Congratulations, Jane and Darren. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> you now get a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,750. Well, you were responsible for, for a small <laughs> yeah. part of that. Uh, so very, very well done for that. What do you want to see come up in this last round? What's going to help you win it? Personally, yeah. David Bowie albums from the 1970s. Good. That, that would do me. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Darren? <laughs> Queen, Monty Python, anything from the 80s. <laughs> OK, well, listen, we just have to see what turns up. You know what they're like, always a little bit random. But uh, today's offering is this. Oliver Cromwell. Defeated US sports teams, Paul Weller, iconic female stars and their directors. <laughs> OK. Yep. Nothing springs to mind for me. What are you? Bottom one. You go for that one? Go on your own. OK. Yeah. You're yeah, going we'll to go, go for the iconic female stars and their directors. OK, iconic female stars and their directors it is. OK, very best of luck. We're looking for anyone who directed a film a feature film made for cinema release starring one of these three, please. So anyone who directed a Catherine Hepburn film, a Marilyn Monroe film, or a Meryl Streep film. So according to IMDb, anyone who directed uh, a film by any of these uh, up to the beginning of 2021. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Yeah. Uh, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. Mm. To win that jackpot, all you need is just for one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Excellent. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. <laughs> OK, so Catherine Hepburn chooses in The African Queen, which was, I think was directed by John Huston. Um, Billy Wilder, possibly for Catherine Hepburn. Um, Frank Capra. Marilyn Monroe. Uh, she might be Billy Wilder as well, but I don't know. Meryl Streep. Oh, she's been in everything, but I don't know who the directors are. Do you have any, any thoughts? No, not on either, <laughs> I'm afraid. Nothing at all. Um, so I might have to stick with the Catherine Hepburn. So I'll probably go for John Huston. I think he directed The African Queen. Yeah, yeah I think he did. Um, Billy Wilder and then Capra. Frank Capra, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think I'll go for those three, yeah. OK, should we stop the clock? Yeah, are you, you happy? <laughs> yeah. There we are. OK, your three answers are... OK, so um, for the top, all in the top category, okay. Catherine Hepburn, they're John Huston. John Huston. Um, Billy Wilder. Billy Wilder. And Frank Capra. And Frank Capra. Yeah. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Probably John Huston. John Huston goes last. Least likely to be pointless? Um, Frank Capra. Frank Capra and Billy Wilder with Pop in the middle. OK. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got Frank Capra, Billy Wilder, and John Houston. Well, very, very good luck. Three good answers on the board there. If one of these turns out to be pointless and wins that jackpot for you, £2,750 up for grabs. What would you like to do with that if you were to win it? Um, well, we went on holiday to Finland a couple of years ago with the family and absolutely loved it, so I'd like to see a bit more Scandinavia, I think. 
Lovely. Uh, Darren, anything you want to add to that? Of course, I've got to say that the holiday as well, but I'm building a kit car at the moment, so part of it will go towards respray. OK, very good indeed. <laughs> well, best of luck with that. Um, Frank Capra is your first answer. In this case, we're looking for directors of films starring Catherine Hepburn. Let's find out if Frank Capra is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Frank Capra. <laughs> Frank Capra right. is absolutely right. We just have to hope he goes all the way down to zero, and if he does, he will win you £2,750. Down we go through the teens into single figures. Still going right. down with Frank Capra. Still, you've done it! <laughs> Very well done, indeed. <laughs> Frank Capra was a pointless answer, which means you are taking home today's jackpot of £2,750. Oh, Brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> very, very well done. You, you looked delighted as soon as the Catherine came up. It was like, well, determined, I would say, is what you looked. Um, <laughs> and State of the Union was the Frank Capra movie that Catherine Hepburn was in. Very, very well done. Uh, Billy Wilder uh, had not directed Catherine okay. Hepburn, so oh. he was an incorrect dancer, although he would have scored four points for Marilyn Monroe, of course, oh, okay. he famously directed. And John Huston, African Queen, you're absolutely right, and that was another pointless answer. Oh, so fantastic. very nicely done. Very nicely done indeed. Uh, some very, very big uh, movie directors on this Catherine Hepburn uh, board. The David Lean was a pointless answer. Um, there's Frank Capra and John Houston. Sidney uh, Lumet, he directed in A Long Day's Journey and Tonight. Also the director of uh, 12 Angry Men and lots and lots of other things. Howard Hawks and John Ford were the only uh, directors who scored points there for that category. Uh, now, Marilyn Monroe. Again, some very famous um, directors. Fritz Lang uh, directed Marilyn Monroe. George Cukor, Laurence Olivier, who directed her in The, the Prince and the Showgirl which is the film that the other film, My Week with Marilyn, is about. They had a, let's call it, fractious relationship, uh, the two of them. Oh, Otto Preminger as well. Uh, the only ones who scored points there, Howard Hawks scored again, Biddy Wilder scored, and John Houston scored a point for Marilyn Monroe. Uh, and loads and loads of big names for Meryl Streep. I mean, she's done so many amazing films. Uh, Adam J. Pakula, who was the director of Sophie's Choice, Greta Gerwig, who did um, the Little Women uh, remake very recently that Meryl Streep is in. Uh, Michael Cimino, who is the director of um, The Deer Hunter that she was in. And Stephen Frears, who did uh, Florence Foster Jenkins. Um, the ones that score points, Steven Spielberg scored points, uh, Clint Eastwood, David Frankel, Robert Redford, Woody Allen, Philida Lloyd as well. They're the ones who score points. Other pointless answers you could have gone for, Nora Ephron for Julie and Julia. Um, you could have had Old Parker. Uh, for Mamma Mia, here we go again. Stephen Daldry for The Hour, Stephen Soderbergh for The Laundromat, Sidney Pollock for Out of Africa, Tommy Lee Jones, Wes Anderson for Fantastic Mr Fox, uh, and Wes Craven, a very different Wes, for uh, Music of the Heart. Very, very well played. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Jane and Darren, who take away today's jackpot of £2,750. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.